So have you had, and we, we say him, but there's also directors like Gillian Armstrong. Sure. Have, have you dealt with her much when oh, you're yeah, Star Trek yeah, and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did, first one for her was uh, My Brilliant Career. My Brilliant Career, Which, of which discovered yes. Judy Davis. Crazy lady, what a great actress though. I thought <laughs> she was fabulous in that picture. And uh, she was also, um, she was in Heat Wave. She was and very, she, Heat Wave, of course. Yeah, yes. and, and, and other pictures. And also she's in um, High Tide, I mixed for Julie. Yeah. Gillian Armstrong. Oh, um, I also generally get on very well with, with uh, ladies. I like them. <laughs> um, and I've got, I, I don't have any problem about, I don't have any problem about gender at all. I had a big blue with, with one lady once in a film game and I was, I was quite rude to her. But it wasn't because she was a woman, it's because she was screaming when, the, when what was needed was some cool logical thinking. But I've had blues with Blake's too for the same reason. Well, what I'm leading up to is, is how many of these directors have a good sense of sound and have a good opinion about it that you can say it's up to you, it's your film, uh, and you think they're making the right choice? Oh, I think they're all pretty good. When they get to that stage, if they're directing big feature films, generally speaking, they're pretty good. One guy was really, um, uh, precious is a funny word, but... Um, uh, Cox, tell me his first Paul name. Paul Cox. Paul Cox. Lovely man, but so he didn't want anything in stereo. He didn't want to use Dolby stereo. When he, I mixed a film for him called uh, Man of Flowers. A lovely film. Yes. A lovely film. He made a lot of these lovely, intimate, he European did. type oh, films. He did. Yes. He did. He was a really they nice guy. They won all the festival awards. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Really nice guy. He said, I don't want to use Dolby stereo. I said, Well, you do. He said, no, no, I don't. I said, you do, even if you don't use it. He said, what do you mean? I said, even if you have no sound at all that comes from left or right from surrounds, you, want to, you need to use Dolby Stereo because it has beautiful, pristine dialogue, which you're on about, which you're all about, and you can play your effects exactly the same as you played in all your mono pictures up until now, but you get better quality. It took a long time to convince him. Even if it was basically a mono soundtrack absolutely, I coming out of a stereo. I image. said, I'm happy to have every sound in your picture come out of the centre speaker. Hmm. But we still use the system because it sounds better in the movies. Yeah. And it was very hard to convince him of that because he, didn't want, he thought it was disconcerting. He didn't want a bird chirping over here. And even though most people would have wanted the bird chirping over there in that scene, I understood that. I said, mate, that's fine. He hasn't got a chirp over there, yeah. but we'll let, the, let it, we'll let him chirp low level in the middle. For the sake of the technology. That, if you like, one, let him yeah. chirp at all. Sure. Um, again, Razorback. Yeah. Bill and McCanker. You know, <laughs> we're making all sorts of films. We were. Um, Bliss, as you mentioned, Burke and Wills. Um, just running up the fringe dwellers we talked about. Mm. Mosquito Coast. Again, this is a, an international film. Peter well, Lear. I did what they call the temp dub because I didn't do the final mix because that went back to Hollywood for final mixing. Right, so only part of that mix. Yeah, so we, we did what we call a temp dub, which was quite a good rough mix. All the dialogue, some of it might be looped later on, but you used all the original dialogue. Um, and, and you mix it fairly well in uh, two or three days, and it went to show, it was to show the backers over there, the, the filmmakers over there. But you mentioned all, all the sorts of films. I mixed, when I first started mixing for Don Saunders, who was the chief editor for Fauna, when we did um, um, Boney, um, Nickel Queen and so on. Way back, yeah. He said to me, and he came out of the English um, film game, as did um, one of his other editors, I can't think of his name now, Little Irishman, um, fiery little guy. But he came out of British Features, Don Saunders. And he said, um, the best bit of advice I was ever given and I give to everybody is, the greatest film in the world is the one you're working on right now. And if you don't think it is, don't do it. Get another job. And it's great, it's great philosophy, you know. I mean, I, 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 I saw a film, I don't know if it's on there or not, but I saw a film, and I just, we, we always saw the film straight through once with the dialogue tracks, maybe a little bit of music, just so I knew what the film was about. Yeah, just watch it. To, yeah. And at the end of the film, the director said to me, what do you think? And I absolutely loathed it. I thought, oh God, this is terrible. I said, mate, I'm a mixer, not a critic. No, he said, I want to know. I said, no, you don't. 
He said, I want to know what you think of the film. I said, you don't want to know and I don't want to tell you. And he said, I do want to know. I said, it's the worst bloody film I've seen, but I can get it right. And this is what I was coming up to. <laughs> and I said that to him. A lot of young directors, they make the film, they cut it together, it's the long cut still, mm. and they get very disillusioned, it's a piece of crap, mm. and they give up, mm. not realising how much more the visual effects, the colour grade, and especially the sound mix and the music will sure. add to it and make it a movie. Sure. It's not a movie yet. Yeah. How often have you seen a film at that early stage and thought, oh. it's not quite there, but I know how we can fix it with the sound? Oh, well, I never got, I never got that confident or that... I know how we can improve error. it at least. <laughs> but, I, well, I, I know what to do, so I do it. I mean, there's a scene shot, and it's in a pub, a couple of guys having a drink, they're talking about their girlfriends and so on. That's the scene. I've got to make their dialogue as clear as possible. I've got to make the other people in the bar relevant when they're supposed to be relevant. I've got to make the thing sound as it sounds. If it's behind the dialogue, get rid of it at that point. Make it loud when it, mm. I've just got to mix it properly. And it's, it doesn't matter a damn what I think of it. Someone else might love it. I might, I might not like it. It doesn't matter. So this comes into that whole idea of sound design, which is what we call it now, this, yes. the idea of mixing all yes. these elements of sound to help tell the story and, and crafting that sound yeah. when rather I, than just being totally accurate with it. When I first heard the sound design name, and all the mix of the same we've gone, Come on, <laughs> come on, just dub that, just give us the sound, we can mix it. So the, the sound design thing has, has uh, changed philosophy, I suppose, and it's changed how a lot of people work, because now you can do a lot of stuff you couldn't do. The mixer's job was not to lay the soundtracks in my time. The mixer's job was to get all the sound that was laid and blend it to the best you could so that it sounded as good as it could sound. That was simple as that. Mm. It wasn't to say, we don't want, now and again I might say, I really don't like this, you know, this track. I thought, I, there's surely a better track than that. You've got so you something. didn't fuss too much about the specifics of a Foley sound effect and things like this? Mate, we had two weeks to mix a movie and our part was to get our part right. Their part was to get their part right. Mate, I'll coach football. The halfback's part's to get his part right. If he starts telling the outside centre what to do, He's wasting his time and he's wasting his own. That's Get the job I, done. I've got another job coming in in a week. Well, well <laughs> sort of. Well, but the, I reckon if everyone gets their own job right, it's fairly easy. Mm. I reckon that's life. So particularly at the time we were doing it, as I say, budgets were budgets. I couldn't say, mate, I can... Mi there was no point, and I said this to a mate of mine once, and he came to help me, a fix mixer. He said, I can't, I can't get this. He said, this is not good enough to continue with. I said, mate, this is real six and this is Thursday, <laughs> okay? I said, this film's finished next Thursday, including playbacks, fix-ups, everything. I said, we keep going, we come back later and we do what we can for that thing. There's no point saying, mate, I finished your picture that, and, and here's, the, here's the six reels of the 12 and they sound fantastic, yeah, what happens next? Exactly. So we, we, it, was, it was very much a, everybody helped everybody because we were all new. There was hardly any, any, any big heads in the room wanting to, wanting to demonstrate how clever they were. If there was, they soon got cut down. It was, it was, a, it was a sort of a honeymoon industry, really, in the, a, a period in the film industry. So you did what you could. You helped your mate. You listened to the dubbing editor. He said, mate, I want this scene to sound like this. And you did everything possible to make it sound like that. And if the director said, I think we should do something different, you had your talk and you did what the director wanted. So Simple. are there, when you look at a film these days, and you say you're not a big film buff as it is, coincidentally. Mm. Mm. I'm um, not. But when you look at a film that you've not been involved in, yeah. are there any that you admire in terms of their sound design, their sound mix generally? Generally, no. Because I never go to analyse. I'm, if, it's, um, if something's wrong or something's too loud for something else, I think, God, I want to hear that guy. You know what I mean? But generally speaking, no. I just go to the movies to appreciate the movie. You don't analyse them, you don't think about it anymore? No. Because the last film you did was 1997, Paradise Road. Yes. Uh, Lovely picture. Again for Bruce Beresford.